Tonight, fights is getting heavy in our main event. Over 500 pounds set to collide with both big men looking for a much needed bounce back. For Jamil Big Time McCline, this is the start of a new phase in his career. He spent the last six years unbeaten. This heavyweight on a hot streak racked up 24 of those 28 wins during that stretch. It was a rocket ride to the top that many didn't see coming, especially Michael Grant. The former title contender was trying to get his career back on track when McCline cashed his own ticket into the heavyweight jackpot. That first round KO was followed up with two more impressive outings. Wins over Lance Whitaker and this against Shannon Briggs removed a lot of the doubts about Big Time's place in the Big Time. By mid-2002, Jamil was on a short list of top contenders. Then came December 7, 2002, with a worldwide audience watching, Jamil suffered a TKO loss to Vladimir Klitschko. It was a night he'd rather forget. The poise and determination that had got him to this point was nowhere to be found. Klitschko's knocked down in the fifth, and then this, swarming him in the tenth, made a downhill trend. And McCline never recovered. Not to make excuses, because excuses didn't get me here. Uh, which is why this is the first time that people are hearing this. Um, I am, uh, I simply overtrained, and to to quote the, the phrase of the famous Vince Lombardi, fatigue makes cowards of men. And just going into that fight, I was just extremely fatigued, mentally, physically, spiritually, I was just wiped out. And he was just wiped out of the heavyweight rankings, too. That prime real estate he worked so hard to possess was now in the hands of others, an opportunity that Jamil let slip away. I am hard on myself about letting that chance, that opportunity slide, slide by me, but it, it will come again. It will come again because I am one of the best heavyweights in this division. In order for Jamil to prove that point, he needs to get past Charles Schufer, the 30-year-old late bloomer, is now 19 and three, and like McCline, in those three defeats, a TKO loss to Vladimir Klitschko. But since then, he's shown signs that things are progressing. For 12 rounds, he outworked Elise Castillo. Schufer boxed, mixed it up, landed unanimous decision win. Then, in January, Schufer started off this year's Friday night fights with a showdown against former U.S. Olympian Lawrence Claybay. After falling behind in the early round, Schufer found his rhythm in the middle and later rounds. However, Charles admits he didn't press the action when he needed to and lost a close unanimous decision. So now both fighters want to stop that losing streak at one. Charles Schufer knows what he's in store for, so does Big Time. I got one of the best jabs in the business, and tonight we're going to use it over time. Use it over time, and once we soften them up with the jab, then we'll bring the right hand, left hook, and hook to the body and finish them off. I like to box them and use my hand speed and foot move work. Foot movement, that's what I plan on doing, and if I do that, I think I wouldn't have no problem with it. I am my toughest critic, so coming coming away with just a win is not going to satisfy Jamil McCline. Coming away with a dominant performance will satisfy Jamil McCline. Anything less than that, um, I won't be satisfied. Charles Schufer, a familiar face, not just here on ESPN, but in Hollywood. He played George Foreman opposite Will Smith in the movie Ali. 6'3", checked in at 246. For Charles, 19 and 3 now. It's time to show all of us just how much he is improving every day. His last five, three and two record, Klitschko took him out in the six rounds. Teddy's tips for Charles Schufer. Well, if he's gonna win tonight, don't just cover up. He does that a lot. If you do, and you lay outside, McCline will just pick you apart with the long jab. Come forward behind your jab, take the distance away from him, test his confidence, test his conditioning. Faint, then work. Although McCline's huge, he's not sure of himself all the time. If you faint aggressive moves at him, he'll react. He'll go defensive, then you can get in close. Don't let him grab. When you do get in close, where you belong, punch. Take a step back if you have to, or push off. But don't allow McCline to tie you up. As for Jamil McCline, one look and you realize what he's all about. Size, six foot six, 277 pounds. And once again, big time, 28, three and three. More importantly though, that third loss, it's a chance now to start fresh. His last five shows the quick rise 
and then the sudden fall. Teddy's tips for big time. Well, McCline's going to get back on track. You can win with just a jab because of your huge size and reach advantage. And the fact Shufit is known for laying back, you can win just by controlling the distance with that left hand. Split the guard. Shufit will just cover up with his gloves on both sides of his face. Shoot the right hand down the middle, splitting between the gloves. Finally, tie up, then get back outside. Although you're huge, your temperament is to box. When the smaller shooter gets close, Flurry, tie him up before he can do anything, then get back on the outside with that jab. Tony Orlando, your referee for this 10-round heavyweight fight between Charles Shuford and big-time Jamil McCline. It was just this past December where he was knocking on the door against Vladimir Klitschko, a fight that he admits he came in at about 50%. He was overtrained. He had nothing left in the tank. And the lack of confidence, he says, is because he knew it stepping into the ring. Well, I guess he's not overtrained tonight because this is the heaviest of his career. He's 14 pounds heavier, matter of fact, than his last fight. It's been almost five years since McCline has been even close to this, even close to this weight. 277 pounds tonight for McCline. He's a knock on Shuppet. He's technically a pretty solid fight. He knows what he's doing in there. He knows how to fight. One of the knocks is you can out busy him. He's not busy enough. Too defensive. Maybe the perfect style for the tall McCline coming off a knockout loss to get himself back together. If I was in the corner shoot, but I would press McCline early. Test that confidence. Maybe shake it. Very difficult, Joe, to come off a knockout loss. Only five months ago by McCline. It's hard to get your mind back together, especially if you're a heavyweight. You've got to get in there with those monsters. I would shoot, but I would try to shake that mindset or test that mindset early not lay back and let McCline get his confidence get his feet on the start to think he's okay McCline will give up his height once in a while he will reach once in a while you just have to be ready to make sure you pull the pull the trigger on the punch when he reaches last left hand from Charles Schubert landed Shuppert knows what he's doing. He'll change distance. He'll come up well. He's defensively pretty responsible. See how he changes distance, makes you reach. Now he's got to look to do the other part. He does the, he does the hard part. He makes you miss, like the old timers would say. Now start doing the fun part. Make the guy pay. He told us yesterday, Charles Shuppert said, I want to box. I want to use my footwork. I want to show him good movement. And I think that my superior hand speed will actually be the key. Well, if there's any foot movement from Shuppert, in my humble estimation, it should be forward. If he goes back, go back once in a while, make McCline reach in and counter. That's okay. But other than that, go forward. Push McCline backwards. Test that mindset. Pretty good work in the final minute here by Charles Shuford as Jamil McClain getting his feet underneath him in his first round of professional boxing back since that TKO loss to Vladimir Klitschko in December. The left hand of McClain is his best punch to Jim, and that's the most important punch in this particular fight. Slow start for big time. Hey, Wayne, I'm Joe Tessitore. Joe's my name. Nice to see you. <clears throat> Which one? Well, they start them young in Atlantic City, grooming a boxing fan. 
enjoying the heavyweight action here on Friday Night Fight. Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas here in round number two of our main event. Charles Schuford in the white and black against big time Jamil McCline, the six foot six, 277 pound heavyweight contender. There's two reasons why I say the jab is the most important punch for McCline. One is he has a good one. And he's tall. He has good range. And two is the style of Schuford will allow you to dictate with the jab. Schuford sometimes will be too conservative. Sometimes he will lay back and pump up and allow you to dictate control with your left jab. Right now, I give credit to Schuford. He's not being as conservative as he has been in the past. Schuford doing nice work, Teddy, with that right hand over the jab and then coming back with the left. Schuford knows that he's got a big guy in front of him, but he also knows he's got a big guy in front of him who can be made to be tentative. And a big guy in front of him who's coming off a knockout loss. Schuford is trying to test that. Trying to see if he can shake McCline in those areas. <laughs> Therefore, Schuford's coming out of his usual shell, and he's trying to be aggressive and assertive. It's just a matter of how much he can do it, how much he will do it. See, I didn't mind that by Schuford. I'll tell you why. Even though he didn't do anything, he changed distance where he didn't allow McCline to take control off of that jab. He would have just stayed at the end of that jab. He would have allowed McCline to dress him up off the jab. He changed range and McCline got out of position. Super mix it up pretty good here, Doug. Every once in a while he'll press the big guy backwards. Every once in a while he'll let the big guy come forward and he'll take the big guy's height away that way. By letting him walk in, give up his height, and then he'll look to counter him. There's a right hand by Charles Schufer as Jamil McCline stumbles back, and Schufer jumps right out of the punch with another right hand. Schufer is in his punching game. Inside those long arms of McCline. And Schufer has McCline just where he wants him to be. Back to where he was in his last fight five months ago when he was stopped. Starting to wonder if he's okay. This is exactly what you would want Schuford to do. Not let McClane get some rounds under his feet and get confident. Make McClane start doubting himself. Make McClane start having flashbacks to the last time he was in the ring. And you can see the effect of it. McClane's tenement. Look, McClane right now is not using that jet. He's glad he's being left alone. The effects of that aggression, the effect of those punches from Schuford is showing itself right now with McClane playing back. What a big second round for Charles Schuford. Here's a look at the damage that was done by that right hand in the second round. One of the things that was very effective, two things. One, shoot could put punches together. Anytime you put punches together, you got a chance to score. And right here, you can see, later in the round, Schuford staying on top of McCline. But what I'm saying here is McCline trying to go into that turtle defense, crossing his gloves. When you do that, you put yourself in position where you can punch, and Schuford took advantage of that. Jamil McCline, his first fight after a TKO loss against Vladimir Klitschko. You said it earlier, Teddy. This is not necessarily the best opponent to come back against in Charles Schuford. Schuford, a good fighter who feels that he's improving every fight that goes on and every day in the gym that he moves forward. And in that second round, he proved it. Round number three in our main event, scheduled for 10, Schuford in the climb. Punch numbers in round number two. Schuford landing 24 to McCline's eight. Of course, most of those coming in the final minute. You know, to be honest with you, Joe, if you looked at Schuford's last fight, and you probably you look at it, it was on our egg as long as play play. There was a lot of spots where he just laid back, put the ear muscles. If you looked at that, you probably, and which McCline's people probably did, you probably have to say it's a good fight. You have to fight a competitive guy at this point in your career. You're coming on television. You can't drop down to the to the C and the D level guys. You gotta still be at the B level guys. You try to pick the right guy coming back. And all for that fight, the way Shoot could cover it up and lay back, you would think it was a good style from the club using the jail. But that's not the shoot.
secret here tonight. Tonight, Shukri has taken advantage of what he needs to. He's being aggressive, knowing he's got a guy who's coming off a knockout loss. He learned a lot from that fight against Lawrence Clave, the former Olympian. There were moments in that fight where Shukri was the aggressor, he was effective, and he was doing damage to Clave. What he told us yesterday was, I should have picked it up more. I had him where I wanted him, and now I learn that that's what I have to do when I have a guy in that position. But I will say this, Teddy, I think it had more to do with Charles Schubert than it had to do with Lawrence Clayday. And no doubt about it, as you said, this is a different Charles Schubert here tonight. Well, I'll tell you another thing. That last round, the two big for Schubert, I went to him, one to him, but it's also made the time a little tighter on the outside of the kill. Although now the time's let those hands go as Schubert walks in and the time lands for the good count of shots. I think with the uppercut, the Superman is saw. Now the tables have turned. Jamil McClyne picks it up. Halfway through round number three, and becomes the aggressor and scores a knockdown. A lot of rounds. A lot of rounds left. Now we have to see how calm McClyne is. Coming off that knockout loss, he's going to be very anxious. And coming off the last round when he was hurt, he's going to be very anxious now to finish with it. He's got to be a little patient. Left hand. A lot of these punches are being wasted by McClyne. He should be concentrating on the body right now. What is this ref doing? Bad stop. Bad stop. I don't like that Orlando stop. Stops it, I don't like that stoppage. I don't say that too often. But I don't understand that stoppage. I was just saying that I thought McClyne was wasting a lot of those shots. They wanted to land it. I thought McClyne should be going to the body to free shoot it. He knew what he had to do. He knew he had to come up. He knew he had to survive the storm. I'm a little confused by that stoppage. And so is the corner man right here, where you can see the face on cameras get on it. There they are. He is going after this referee, the corner man. And Schubert. Hey, man, you'll stop the fight when you ain't have to. Hey. Charles Schubert Sr., his father, the trainer, quite upset with the outcome here in the third round when halfway through the third okay. round yeah, his fine. son was knocked down by a combination got up tried to steady himself put the guard up as mccline was trying to sneak through and do some damage all of a sudden oh, tony orlando says it's oh, over you know Joe, sometimes it's hard to defend the father because they can get too emotional in the corner so you have to really look at it really careful when a father's involved, but this is one time I agree with him. I thought that fight would stop too soon. All right, let's take a look at what happened in that third round when Jamil McClyne got a sudden wake-up call in the second round and then came out and halfway through the third, connects with a left, then a right, and put a good combination together, kind of glancing on the side of the head to floor Charles Schufer. Yeah, well, Schufer reached in a little bit with a wide hook, and the right hand by McClyne that was thrown, McClyne didn't even know he was going to land it, but it got inside that wide hook, and I don't think Schufer ever saw it, and that's why he was dropped. But what's more important, what happens after that? Let's watch. Now McClyne is jumping all over Schubert. I thought that he was too close to him, smothering himself. I thought Schubert knew what he was doing, keeping his hands up, trying to weather the storm. The referee didn't think so. And Teddy, what is the argument to be made I'd like to that. see a little bit more of that playback if we get a chance. Where's the argument to be made that Charles Schubert was not under control of what he was doing? He knew very well what he was doing up against the ropes with the guard up. Yes, he did. He had his gloves up. He knew that he had to survive that moment. He knew he didn't want to get caught anything else clean. He was extremely conscious of the circumstances, and as you could see, he immediately reacted to them. And again, as I was saying earlier, I thought McCline a little over anxious, was letting the headshots go, not going to the body, was jumping in, was smothering himself a little bit, but in the end, I guess it doesn't matter. We are going to catch up with big time McCline in just a little bit. He moves to 29-3-3, his 17th knockout, and we will find out if it did a lot to regain that confidence. Brian and Max, controversial stoppage here in the third rounds.
Yeah. Yeah. Now I want to show after we get finished with this more of the more of the tape where after the knockdown up to the point that it was stopped so we could see how many of those punches were really landing. Not Yeah, well, he's in the ring right he's now, in so the somebody's ring. got to get him. Russell, somebody, stage manager's got to get him. He's going over now. Steve's going over now to get him, the stage manager. Jamil. They're getting it. They're yeah. Yeah, it don't worry, they got it. Over the top rope. That's what you can do. <clears throat> can we get a monitor, guys? Very. Any, any, can we get a monitor? Is, are we gonna are we gonna bring him in before hey, that? Jimmy. Congratulations, are Jamil. Are we gonna bring Thank him you. in that before that? Right in the middle. How are you? How are you then doing? we bring him in. Good. Okay, here, come on in here, here, Jamil. Right in the middle of us. Jamil, get right in the You're middle of us. Always my friend. All right, let's get a monitor here. You're a gentleman. You're we got one of Jimmy the good Glenn guys here too. Give me a monitor and over there. Not only that, but one of the real guys, one of the real boxing guys. Good job coming back strong in that third round, man. Good job coming back strong. Good, how are you, Jamil? Does that include the VO? Does that include the B-roll? Okay. Let's hold on a second. They're talking about Tyson for a second. Hey, what'd you get him with? Jamil. Glancing right hand to the side of the head in the third round. No, in the third round, what you did to him. You know, it seemed like it was quick. Boom, boom. Were you surprised by the stoppage? Did you think it was a little early, that stoppage? Yeah. I don't doubt that. I'm just saying, did you think that that was a... Brian, the grand ballroom here in Bally still buzzing over the third round TKO win by big time Jamil McCline. Here it is, Teddy. Well, the right hand inside that wide left hook by Schubert. I think Jamil might have been a little surprised that, that he caught him himself. We'll, we'll find out in a second. And then here's the flurry by Jamil that backed up Schubert against the ropes where Schubert put up his guard, but then, Teddy, you feel that Tony Orlando stopped it just a touch early. McCline was doing the right thing. He jumped on his man. He tried to give the referee an excuse to stop it, but I thought it was stopped a little too soon. What do you think? Well, I, I, I agree that, uh, with what Teddy said here. 
uh, only by about three or four seconds because I was just about to uh, step back and drop some uppercuts to the body uh, just to bring his hands down and go back upstairs. I mean, for all, for all purposes, uh, he was pretty much uh, walking around with a fork in his back at that point anyway. Jamil, you hit the deck in the second round. Does this bring back the confidence? Did it do what you wanted it to do tonight? Oh, well, I think so. Um, I don't think I went down. Did I go down? In the second round? Yeah. Yes. No, I didn't hit the floor, did I? There was no count there. Absolutely not, my friend. But anyway, oh, he hit me. The second, he yeah, hit okay. me. Yeah, he stumbled yeah. me. Absolutely. And that just woke me up. Um, that just uh, made me pay uh, more uh, closer attention to the situation at hand. Not what you expected. I'm sure you didn't expect this, but maybe what you needed. Maybe what a guy like you needed to be put in a fire and pull yourself out of the fire. Absolutely. You know, I'm here to show people uh, that, you know, I do have the heart. I do have the courage to, uh, to uh, make some noise in this uh, division. You're, you're absolutely right. Big right hand in the second round that, that you stumbled on a little bit. But Jameel McCline does exactly what he wants to do. He gets the win he was looking for. Congratulations, Jameel McCline. More boxing from Atlantic City when we come back on Friday Night Fights.